12, still morning. Lah. Good morning, everyone. <coughs> Hallelujah. Uh, yesterday, we have about maybe more, I think, because I asked Pastor John how many people turned out for the Easter March. He said, um, he said, it should be 1,500 and above. Wow. Huh? So, yeah, praise God for that. <coughs> so, uh, I've been busy for the Easter March till yesterday and uh, at night I have to attend a wedding. <laughs> so I don't have time to prepare PowerPoint. <laughs> so it's okay, today I just preach for the Word of God. Is that all right before you? Yeah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Shall we pray first before we, we start? Father, we thank you for wonderful things that you have done. And today we even want to remember that Jesus... <coughs> Is our Savior, is our Lord, He is risen, He is the resurrection of life, He is our Redeemer, He is our leader, our shepherd, oh God. Father, we thank you for everything that you have done and you're going to do in our midst. And I pray, O oh Lord Father, today for all of us that we will open our hearts to listen to your words and not only listen but be the doer of the, the, the word of God. And I pray for your anointing, rest upon my lips as I share, Father, your Holy Spirit, guide me. And whatever that I release, I share the Lord, Father, it shall be for you, not from my flesh. We thank you. I just pray those who hear the word, they will have renewal in their mind, transform in their heart, and manifest in their behavior. We thank you. In Jesus' name, I ask and pray. Amen. After many success, uh, a lot of us, we've been through success and failure. But uh, after we've been through success, uh, it's good that we celebrate, amen? We just celebrated the victory of Jesus Christ. But every success that we go through, we do not lay back, we do not fall back, you know? It's very important that after we have a success, for example, yesterday, wow, well, it's a great event, you know, it's such a victory. And uh, remember not to uh, breathe and relieve and lay back. Because uh, like when Jesus was resurrected, he came back to see the disciples. You remember? And not only one time, he came back two times, three times. And even until today, sometimes he will come back to see certain people. <laughs> you know, he's everywhere. So even after such great victory, we still have to move on. Uh, can I hear you say, move on? move on? And when we move on, we move up a notch, we move to another level. Everybody say another level. another level. We shouldn't be just satisfied of where we are because our God is, a, is an amazing God. He will bring us from glory to glory. Amen. He will not bring us from glory to stagnant. <laughs> uh, that is very important that we do not stay where we are, but we move on, we move up. Amen? We move up, you know? Not move out of the way. Lah. So that's why, what happened after the resurrection of Christ? Let's go to scripture, uh, turn to John chapter 21. <clears throat> We're going to read the whole... Uh, Chapters. If you found it, say yes. <clears throat> John chapter 21. <clears throat> you got it? Say yes. So that we are all in the same page. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as uh, Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, and uh, the sons of Zebedee and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we will go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not re realize that it was Jesus. He called out on to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. 
When they did, they were unable to hold the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Peter, Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said, Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the, of the disciples then asked him, who are you? They, they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came to the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger and you dressed yourself and went where you wanted, but when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Everybody look up here. My, Simon, uh, my, my sermon today entitled, Gone Back Fishing. How many of us will be saw such a great view, you know, like Simon Peter and disciples of Jesus Christ, that Jesus was res resurrected and he came back to see them. Even Thomas doubted whether this is the Lord. And uh, of all the things that Jesus has said to them, you know, um, go, Holy Spirit will come, and you will be my witnesses, and so on, you know. Um, but the disciples seem to be restless at that moment. Huh? Some, I will give you some uh, of the reading that I have. Some of the preachers will say that, oh, uh, they're totally not going to do they're going to do nothing, you know. But it actually is not true, you know. Simon, uh, Simon Peter, by occupation, he's a fisherman, you know. Some scholars say that they go back fishing because uh, this is what they do best. Amen? <laughs> and maybe they are hungry. Some scholars say hey, they are hungry, lah, you know. So it's not, it's okay for them to go back fishing, isn't it? Uh, some preacher really taro uh, Peter uh, say, ah, yeah, go back fishing. He should be fisher of men. But there are a lot of argument here. I don't know which one you take, okay? Uh, but this morning, I would like to bring to you that they gone back fishing is something that they are familiar with, something that they do if, if before they follow Jesus. Even when they follow Jesus, I believe they also catch fish for food, okay? So here... You see, Simon Peter went back fishing with the disciples, you know. And uh, here, Jesus met with the disciples. And this is something very, very uh, special. Jesus appeared to them in Galilee, all right, only a few disciples. And actually, Jesus' point is to target Peter, all right. So we will go through uh, bit by bit um, until the conversations where uh, Jesus talked to uh, Peter. 
Okay, they seem to have been sitting around. Maybe they are unsure what to do until Peter decides to go fishing and the others, you know, they just come along. Okay? So while not necessarily they are aimless or, or they are, you know, now nothing to do, they are doing what is right in their own eyes. Everybody say right in their own eyes. Sometime uh, when we have done something, maybe we all do a project. This is the setback of projects. Like after we do projects, uh, then what else? Oh, we are very happy, we celebrate. Then after that, we go back to our <coughs> old, same old, same old, you know? Like uh, those Easter March committee, after this, uh, what are you going to do? Finish already the project. No, we need to move on. So as the disciples of Jesus Christ, they move on. Okay? So when we are uncertain what to do, we should simply do our duty and God will guide us. Amen? After whatever that success, whatever that we enjoy, whatever that we celebrated, I think the disciples, they do the right thing. Because they simply just don't know what is next. So they go back to do, uh, simply do their duty. If you are in an usher, continue to be the ushers of the church. If you are a cell leader, continue to be the cell leaders of the, of the church. Continue to do what we are out to, ought to do. Amen? And in the midst of doing what you are familiar with, uh, please be anticipated because Jesus may come out of nowhere unexpectedly come to us. Just like the disciples, they do what they are best at, they do what they are normally do, certainly. You know, sometimes people will ask, uh, what is next? God, I must need the answer now. I remember uh, just a few months ago, I was in uh, Miri Church, you know, uh, ministering with uh, Pastor Anne Law and Dr. Ozawa. They, this uh, sister came to me and said, please, I want the answer now, now. You must pray. Because I was prophesying for a few people, they feel that it's very accurate, they started to share about it. This sister heard it, came to me straight. So, I, I, was, I want now, I must have the answer, must, you know. I, I think I'm, some of us, we are like that also, isn't it? Must have the answer, so okay lah. Uh, then I pray with her. <clears throat> pray, pray, then I try to see the Lord. The Lord says she needs to wait and the Lord will deal with her. You know, she will know when the Lord speak. So I say it like that. Like, she's not satisfied. You know? <laughs> After that, she tell me the whole length of story. I need to stand there and listen because it's after the service already. Okay, then I told her, all right, you know what? You do, you go back to do whatever uh, that God put you here, all right? And then uh, when, when it is time, when you have the peace, then you move on. She doesn't understand, you know. She said, no, I must know God wants me to say yes and no now. Then I tried to convince her, you know, my story. I also the same. I know that I have called, but I don't know how to, uh, what is the, the, the end journey. If I know the, the end journey, uh, I don't want to come full time. Uh. You understand? Uh? But I know I'm called. I know I'm called. But if I God reveal everything, then I will consider maybe I will not go. God has a way. Uh. He reveal a bit here and there. Then you just obey. Uh. You obey, you go into it, then you know uh, the things that God has for, for you is very not easy, uh, you know. So sometimes God give lead us this way, you know. It doesn't mean that He was He sometimes you will people prophesy over us, uh, wow, you give a great evangelist. You know, you preach to thousands, you know. Um, then the person, after two or three years, since that he's still not an evangelist, then he give up. Uh, you think if, to be an evangelist, just one night, overnight, you can be an evangelist, uh, you know. God has to connect you with the right person, you know. God has to train us. God has to send you to a school of you know, hard knocks and maybe uh, making mistakes. After learning all this, uh, maybe it takes 10 years, only God will put you to be evangelist, you know? So nothing like 
It's like instant noodles uh, society uh, nowadays. We are all very consumer. Correct or not? So this lady, after I explained, I thought she's satisfied, you know. And then when I turn and do other ministry, uh, she go to another <laughs> team members and ask the same thing. Oh, please pray for me. And the, my team member pray the same thing over her. <laughs> God has spoken. You know? So how many of us, we know, like uh, all the apostles, they know what is the next step. They need to be witnesses. They will see miracles, signs, and wonders. They can cast out demons and so on. The Holy Spirit will come. They know. But in the midst of doing uh, uncertainty, not, uh, the things haven't happened yet, you know, the future has have not been unfolded. What do you do? You know? Uh, maybe we can be like the disciples. We go back to do uh, our own duty. But not necessarily go back to your own way, or always. But just continue on with your life because in the midst of doing, serving God, God will come again. Jesus will come again. All right? Can I hear amen for that? When we are uncertain what to do, we should simply do our duty and let God be our guide. That is point number one. So let's move on. In verse 3, they night they catch nothing. <laughs> uh, everybody say nothing. Sometimes uh, in a ministry, it's not fruitful. Uh, it's barren. This one, nothing represents barrenness. Okay? They've done what they thought was the right thing, but experience after failure. Okay? This prepared them to learn one of the central lessons of discipleship, which is this. Apart from Jesus, they can do nothing. Amen? You can go back, another point comes, you can go back to do what you are best to. We have, you can go back to do your ministry, your duty. But if Jesus is not in it, you can achieve nothing. All right? So Christ has to be center of everything that we do. That's why uh, these, are very, these are professional bis businessmen, okay? Uh, these are very good, uh, good, not businessmen, fishermen. They are very good at fishing. But the night they caught nothing, you know. So how many of us, we are full, filled with our past glory, eh? Fill all our past full of glory. But suddenly, one day, when you do the same all, same all, you did not have any achievement. So maybe you have to check whether Jesus is in, in it or not. So here, they go back to fishing. They caught nothing represent barrenness, okay? And um, then they learn one lesson that without Jesus, they caught nothing. So let this one, we, we move on, then we, we go to the next point, which is this, that Jesus appeared to them, and Jesus said in verse 5, Friends, haven't you any fish? Have you caught any fish? And this kind of question when the way Jesus asked it, Jesus already knew that they caught nothing. So Jesus liked to ask this kind of question, uh, like God himself. God always asks a question that he already know the answer. Like when he asked Adam, what you have done? What you, what you have done? Actually, God already know uh, what you have done. And here, Jesus repeat the all-knowing God, his... Uh, uh, Jesus uh, <clears throat> give in this friends haven't you any fish okay and uh, in the Greek word friends here can be translated as pai dia yi oh I don't know how to this is Greek huh? <laughs> I don't want to go there uh, it is pai dia yi okay which means children. Um, and J.H. Morton's suggestions based on modern Greek, okay, this expression is similar to the British lads, L-A-D-S, uh, lads. Jesus actually called them children or little children, okay? And uh, so when Jesus called that, 
none of them realize that this is Jesus, you know, except John, Apostle John, because the beloved one recognized. Uh, and then when he said, hey, that is the Lord, Peter, what did, what did he do? Outer garment, he wrapped it uh, himself, and then he jumped into the water and swim uh, to the to the to the shore, ashore. All right. So here, you see, when they caught nothing, Jesus said, "Put your net to the right of the boat, to the right side." And when they put, they put out. They caught so many fish. The fish are so big. They caught nothing whole night because Jesus is not with them. When Jesus gave them instruction, said, put uh, the net to the right, they caught the fish. They obeyed the word of Jesus. So here, let me, let me uh, give you the applications. When we do something for the Lord and there is no result, we, we do not stop doing, we continue to do until we hear from the Lord and we obey Him and we will see the results. Amen? The Easter March, uh, actually our committee, we all eyeing for the, uh, the Badan, the Kajang field. Stadium, oh, stadium. This is called stadium, huh? Uh, Kajang Stadium. I have a lot of faith, you know. I thought that we will definitely get, get that feel uh, because two years ago we got it. And then, uh, by the way, there is construction there. I'm, I'm sure nobody going to put, put the feel. So we sang in the letter. <coughs> and I have no other plan, you know. I don't have plan B. Uh, my committee said, oh, maybe we, if we don't get it, uh, we can get other place. Then we just put, okay, option one, option two. So I must get the feel. We pray, we also pray. So after we pray and we submit the letter, they say, oh, it's fully booked. We cannot get the field. So I was a bit sad and disappointed <laughs> because we cannot get uh, the field that I really wanted the Easter March to be there. Then I asked Holy Family, because Holy Family offered us a uh, long time ago, he they, they offered us. So I finally, I go back to Holy Family. I said, hey, uh, please let us use your hall. Then Holy Family said, hey, I'm so sorry, we have a youth camp going on, so you cannot use the hall. You know? Then I told them, uh, hey, I thought you said we can use it if I don't get the feel. But God closed this door, so we don't have the feel. Then Yu Hua, wow, I really tension already. Don't know whether I can get or not. Then I heard our church can get for the sunrise service. I quickly got, get Uncle Roland uh, to talk to the principals. Uh, then thank God we got it, you know. And uh, when I get it, I don't feel anything because it's just option three. <laughs> you get what I mean? But after yesterday, I changed my mind, you know. Everybody said that is the perfect place for us to have. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I thought, it, I thought it's all my way, my way, my way all the way, you know. My way, my way, my way. Then God... God very good, you know, he closed the door, they're not, not good for me. <laughs> he closed the door, they're not good for the church. He closed every door. He purposely narrowed the road, narrow is the way to heaven. Uh. He narrowed everything. Then I have no choice, okay, la, take. <laughs> we, I thought it's not good, but the Lord knows this is the best place for us. Amen. Uh, the tent and the, and the chains and the table, by the way, is sponsored. We do not pay anything for that. Amen. That is truly sponsored. And this year, T-shirts, you know, um, really is really by how God amazingly uh, planned all this. I met someone from our Chinese uh, session, used to attend our Chinese uh, service. Uh, he actually designed T-shirts, so I asked him to design for me. And uh, then... God gave me the revelation, must wear blue because it's a river. Uh, we are so dry, uh, if you have fire, then everything gone. <laughs> you understand? If you go to dry land, you have fire, huh? there's nothing left. The branches all no more already. So God says that we need be, to be refreshed. We need to be watered. We need to be, you know, we need to be cleansed. Not again put on fire, you know, because you are dry, man. Uh, so now you know why? <laughs> so 
Kajan means the river of the living water that kind of refreshes, cleanses. That's why we have, uh, that's why I have that. Uh, huh? So I asked the designer, he charged me zero, you know, he didn't charge me anything. You know? And then the t-shirt, if you get it outside, uh, it will cost maybe 30 to 40, if branded one, maybe 100 plus, you know. But uh, he gave us only 14 ringgit, and we do not earn a cent from every one of you. We just sell you 14 ringgit. You see? So everything is God's orchestrate, is God's blessing. So, and another testimony is this. Uh, you know, anyone know that uh, the Gereja Bethany in Kajang was raided a few months ago? You know this news? Anyone know this news? You don't know this news, huh? Can you raise your hand and say, and, and know that you know? <laughs> Do you know this news? Raise your hands. Okay, good. We don't know that the church exists, you know. Until the police raid. Thank God for the police raid. <laughs> they raid the place. 200 members, you know. Basa Indonesia Church. It's Indonesian speaking. So we got to know them. Then we, uh, you know, our BM department, uh, the BM pastor all get to go to the pastor and get to know him. And uh, then finally, we brought them in into Kajan Pastor Fellowship, the pastors, you know. So this year is the first year they joined Kajan Easter March, you know. Because of the police raid, we get to know them. <laughs> 200 over members, pastors speaking, vibrant church, you know, very vibrant. So we add one more, uh, our brethren, to come and join us. And um, this, I think, is all because of God, uh, you know, that uh, he made things happen and uh, he has a reason for it. They may not like the raiding, uh, the police coming, disturb them. <coughs> but after uh, the police came and uh, raided them, you know, they get to know all the churches in Kajan. You know, we get to make friends. So now we are stronger. Kajan Pastor, you know, uh, Kajan Fellowship, Churches Fellowship, we are stronger now because we have new member coming in. Even in ch those from Chera, Semenye, Balakong also come and join us. You know, that is a great thing. Even African church, there's one African church came. You know, no, no, there's one African church came to join us also. So all of this, I did not do anything. I feel like God, I, I really not, I did not really do much. Uh, but uh, you are so good, you. Make everything happen. Amen. So give God a clear offering in this place. He is a truly amazing God. So when we obey God, uh, we, we do what God wants us, because by God's leading, we will have success. Uh, so here, when they hear the word of, they, they hear uh, Jesus' words, they do what exactly what Jesus uh, asked them to do. They have abundant. Okay? Then, after they swim, okay, to the shore, <clears throat> um, okay, before that, when, when Jesus asked, friends, haven't you any fish? Uh, Peter said, no, okay, and this is very important, okay, just the word no. The disciples admit they have failed at fishing. Okay, how many of us, after so much uh, glory days, uh, glorious day, when we come to today, uh, that you are not doing so well anymore, our church is not growing, you know, there are problems and so on, you know, uh, are we making a confession before the Lord that, God, I'm not uh, good at doing this anymore, or God, I fail at doing this at this point of my life, you know, maybe you're doing so well, uh, maybe I'm not printing anyone, uh, maybe you're uh, doing PA so well, and then one day technology changed, everything changed, you find yourself not catching up, so maybe you sh we should admit that, hey, I cannot catch up anymore, I'm not doing my best, I cannot do my best anymore. You know, I think this kind of confession, God will honor, because we are honest with Him. You see, so here, the disciple admit their, mis uh, their mistake before the Lord. And that lead to, after you do that, uh, 
That lead to where Jesus cooking breakfast for them, you know. Uh, isn't it nice if Jesus come to you and cook breakfast for you? Uh? But this, tr- uh, this, uh, this so pri- these disciples are so privileged, you know. When they swim to the swell, uh, to the to, to the beach, Jesus was cooking fish and bread for uh, the disciples. Jesus prepared the breakfast, and um, wow. So here, um, Jesus, rather than uh, telling them that, hey, you failed again. Uh, uh, without me, you cannot do one. Uh. You know how many leaders, uh, this is a very important leadership uh, style that we can apply. How many leaders uh, that your member are not doing well, you will tell them, hey, I told you before. I told you not to do it, but you've done it. You see, you never listen to me. Have you ever said that to or maybe your children, uh, you always say that to them. Uh, Jesus never do that, you know. Instead of telling them, hey, you fail again. Uh, you see, after I say you put to the right, only you catch fish. Uh, never listen. Jesus never said that, you know. Instead of saying those things, Jesus actually cooked breakfast for them. <laughs> but there is a purpose why he do that. Okay? So, um... When they meet Jesus, all of them suddenly become quiet. And then they all sit down. And Jesus let them eat first, you know. Jesus never thought. Jesus let them eat first. After breakfast, only Jesus asked Peter. Okay, everybody say after breakfast. So if you want to minister to anyone, after breakfast, lah. after you eat. After we eat, you know, over meals are discipleship. If in, right now we are doing discipleship, right? Over meals is the best time for discipleship. Because eating five minutes can finish. You don't go to the fine dining or restaurant, then you have very longer hour. Lah. Okay? Uh, so when you meet up with, if people are very not free today, especially the young working adults, they are not free all the time. But I always tell them, you got time to eat, isn't it? You must eat also, ma. You can, we can have breakfast or lunch or dinner even suffer, uh, then they will come out. But they don't know that actually I, I got something to tell them. Uh, I got something to say. I got something that I want to maybe minister with them or something that I want them to ask me, you know. So over the meal is the best because I learned from Jesus. Jesus over the meal. After that, <clears throat> um, the, Lord have, the Lord has the breakfast ready, then when, when everything finished, he started to ask Peter these questions. Okay, let's go to um, verse 11, I think. The same, the same chapter. <coughs> okay, let's start reading from verse 12. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples, they asked him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord, just came, took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, wow, you see, everybody say finish. <laughs> when they finished eating, uh, get ready. Huh? Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? Okay, everybody look up here. Um, Jesus called Simon by uh, his former name. You notice or not? Simon, son of John. Because Jesus gave him the name Peter, right now. But here, it's as if Jesus, uh, that it's as if Simon were no longer his disciple, you know? The way Jesus talked to him. And he, Jesus asked, uh, Simon Peter three times, do you love me? Alright? 
Um, so here, I find it very interesting that the, the words, the two words, which when Jesus used love, is agapayo, uh, or agape, some of you may know it. Okay, and uh, when Simon Peter answered, he answered, love filio, which is uh, brotherly love. All of us know that Simon Peter, he will be the one, the first to answer Jesus' question, and he will be the one that he will stand out from the rest. Uh, for example, at the Last Supper, he tells Jesus that I will never betray you. And he even asked Jesus uh, before, he said, how many times do we need to forgive? Is it seven times? He thought, uh, so Peter thought that seven times is more than enough. It's already a lot. Oh, I can forgive that same person seven times. It's good enough. But Jesus said 70 times seven. Uh, so Simon will always be the one that I'm the best from the rest. Compared to the rest, even the rest will, will deny you. I will not. Simon Peter. But today, uh, that, on that day, he did not do like that, you know. He is a changed person. He did not tell Jesus, oh, I, I can love you more than the rest. He, he become humble. It's a very humbling experience for Peter. He, he, saw, he saw lay low uh, because he saw Jesus. You know why? Because he betrayed Jesus how many times? Three times. That's why Jesus asked him three times. And you notice or not, again, uh, we go back to this scripture. Jesus has never asked Simon Peter, why you betray me? How many of us, uh, especially uh, I'm in the church long enough uh, to know that sometimes, I, especially I did mistake, everybody will come and tell me what have I done wrong. I already know what I've done wrong. They still tell what I've done wrong. And maybe sometimes people add on so terrible, you know, words and things like that. I know it happened to you, right? Some of you also tell people, when people make mistakes, you tell them, I, you terrible, you know, this mistake, and so on. And especially if somebody betray you, you tell, you tell them, oh, why you betray me, you know? But Jesus is a wonderful person. He never asked Simon Peter, why you betray me? Have you ever thought of, thought of that? Instead, he asked, do you love me? Instead of ask, but because by convictions, by Simon Peter himself, his own conviction, he knows deep down that he betrayed, he's shameful, betrayed Jesus. Uh, not, not to say betrayed, like he denied Jesus, he denied three times. He denied Jesus three times. He knows it and he feels so ashamed. When Jesus is, came to him, instead of asking him, why do you betray? Jesus asked, do you love me? And that keeping hum, keep, keeping humble, you know. Instead of saying, "Oh, I agape you as boastful as before," he said, "I feel you." And uh, on the third time, at the third time, when Jesus asked the same question again, "Do you love me?" Um, then he feel hurt. Sometime uh, in the presence of God, not necessarily, uh, we. When God ministered to us, we were, um, we don't feel uh, hurt or we don't feel bad about ourselves. Because in this case, when Jesus tried to minister to Peter, he feel hurt. Have you ever been hurt by God? Have you ever been hurt by God? Actually, it's good, you know, because every time we are faced with temptations, every time we become preoccupied with uh, even the good things God given us, the question raised, do you love me more than all this, you know? So, according to... Um, I, I forgot the name of the author, but it's okay. 
um, when when we actually feel the sorrow. Uh, okay, I, I found it. <coughs> okay, John of the Ladder. Okay, this is uh, one of the church fathers, AD. 570 to 649, uh, this is where that person lived, uh, John of the Ladder. He referred the hurt of Peter and when he did agree when the third time Jesus asked, asking him that questions, he referred this to joy producing sorrow. Okay? Repentance that enables one to experience the lost love and salvations. And without such brokenness, we are full of self and unable to hear and receive the guidance of the chief shepherd. So sometimes uh, God needs to break us, break the pride in us, you know, correct us. When, when we correct our children, they feel hurt also, isn't it? But after that, it's good for them. So this is what happened to Peter when he is grieved, hurt, because he recalled the three deniers because his pride has been cut by the words of Jesus, you know, because he's, he has been exposed. He has been exposed. So here, it leads to repentance. And this kind of sorrow is very important in Christ, our Christian world with God. If we have not experienced such short sorrow, uh, that God asks us questions, and we feel, we feel so convicted, we feel so lousy, uh, he's so hurt and we, we desire and, and we, we don't have any desire to, to, to go back to the past and we want to change and that is the kind of uh, ministry of the Holy Spirit. That is that kind of Jesus ministry. You know? I know that we go to a lot of revival meetings, we go to a lot of uh, conferences, we go to a lot of concerts and we have this uh, hype experience high in your know, emotions, you know, but we never change. Do you notice or not? Even if we go to a discipleship conference, uh, if we are not encountered with Christ, there is no change. We will not go back and do, do discipleship. Those who go for healing room seminar, if you go already, you learn everything and you are not stay, start praying for people to be healed, uh, that means you, you you have not encountered the real ministry of Jesus. Because if you really have an encounter, whatever you learn, whatever you be ministered to, you will bring those things and you practice it. How many of us, you go to conference, our notes are where, we don't know where we, we put uh, at home. Conference after conference. Last year, we had prophetic conference. How many of us still intimidate, don't want to prophesy after you go through the conference? It cannot be, you know. So, how many of us, we go to conference, maybe you go to a heal, inner healing conference, but go back, you're not healed, you know. You still not repent. I think this is what we need. We need God, Jesus, to come and make us hurt and make us grieve what we have done. Or else we will not change. No? Or else we will not repent. This is, this is not uh, like we understand that we do not, we, this is wrong. But this is really, we understand that this is wrong and we don't want to do that wrong thing. We are with total repentance. This is what happened to Peter. Uh, not by condemning, you know. Uh, the enemy will come and accuse you and condemn you. If, if you ever hear what kind, whatever kind of voice telling you uh, that accusing you, you know, condemning you, that is from the enemy. But what is the word of the Holy Spirit? The word of the Holy Spirit is to bring conviction. Everybody say convictions. Conviction. When conviction comes, uh, you not only know that this is wrong. When conviction comes, uh, you not only know that this is wrong, but you will uh, turn from the old ways. You will not want to do that anymore. You know that this is, this is so wrong that you feel so sorrowful that you don't want to have anything to, be, to do with it anymore. Because it caused you to, be, have, to have such a sorrow in, you, in yourself. How can I do such things? I don't want to do it anymore. I turn away from it. 
This is what conviction will do to us. On the day that we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, Holy Spirit can bring convictions. So when we receive Jesus into our life, we will not want to worship the idol that we worshiped before. We will not want to uh, go back to our old ways because now we are new persons. That is what the conviction will do to us. So how many of us we know, we always say, oh, we don't want to, especially smoking. We, we know that, oh, smoking is not good for me. Uh, I'm a Christian now, I don't want to touch smoke, but we still go back to smoking, we still go back to smoking. Maybe uh, that person has not had the sorrow and convictions. God has not broke you yet, you know. God has not broke you until you, to the point that you said, enough is enough, I don't want to sing anymore. So, what, so once in a while, we need to be broken by God. Can I hear amen for that? We need to go to a point uh, that, uh, like the disciples, we need to acknowledge our mistake. We need to know that you know, Jesus is there to obey him. And at the same time, we need to let God prune us. So here, <clears throat> um, repentance that enables one to experience the Lord's love and salvation. So without brokenness, we cannot receive the guidance of the chief shepherd, and we do not know what is the love of God. This is love, you know. This is tough love. How many of us, we still have, have old habits? Maybe today, we, you, you should come before the Lord and acknowledge that this is, what, this is who you are, this is what you have done, this is what you're still in, this is the habit that I'm still in bondage. You need to admit. And the next thing is let God break you. Let God say whatever to, things to you. You know, It's enough today I want to tell this congregation that if the Lord today asks you this question, do you love me? So what will be your answer? If you can answer it well, let you struggle with God. It's none of my business. <laughs> it is you between you and God. And if you can say a bit yes, it's a good thing. But if you're struggling, you know what will happen? All the things that hinder you will come out to your mind. Then you see, you'll be like Peter. If you feel guilt, not guilt, so much guilt, convicted, shame, grief, and you feel hurt. No, 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 very quiet, huh? And after. God ministered to Peter and he received restorations after Jesus uh, talked to him. Just by that, you know, uh, even though he feel hurt, but God, Jesus actually restoring Peter. So Peter was restored and Jesus said, feed my lamb, okay, take care of my sheep. And uh, Jesus basically asked Peter to be the shepherd of the community of Christians that already exist at that time, all right? And Jesus also uh, prophesied how Peter will die, all right? Uh, but this one is not my message today. My message is just focused on when we come back fishing, uh, uh, we can anticipate, we can expect Jesus to show up and he will continue to minister to us. When we go out, for, in order for us to move out to another phase, when we have success, Jesus will deal with another area in our life. And after he deal with another area in our life, we truly can move on to another level. Success doesn't move us to another level. It is when after we experience the success, and when we have encounter with Jesus, only then we can move on to another level. Amen? So don't think that you have a lot of success you have a lot of trophy, you want to present it to the church, say, oh, this is my trophy. This is what I have done. I'm, I'm already another level. You self-proclaim another level. But has God ministered to you? Has God go to your heart and hurt you and then restore you and then move you to another ministry or move you up another level of anointing? You know, move you another uh, season of our life. We need that. 
So after a success event, <coughs> it's not enough. We need to really go back to Jesus again. We can go to do whatever we need to do, our daily life, our duty, but anticipated, anticipating that Jesus will come and minister to us again. Amen? Amen. So today I want to um, have, let all of us have this experience. And I want you to answer Jesus today. That he is asking us, do, do you love me? Do you love me? Can I have the magician to come and <clears throat> can we all stand and get, get prepared our heart today? If you come with uh, pride, I want you to strip off everything, you know, all the all success, all glory today. I just want you to, want every one of us here to come before the Lord, bear ourselves, nothing to hide, you know, He is all knowing, nothing to hide from the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Can I have the music background? Thank you, Jesus. I want every eye, every eyes closed, every head bows. Today is just between you and the Lord. First things that I want you to do is I want you to acknowledge your mistake. That is the sign that you have stripped off your pride. I want all of us here to not to see yourself as so great, but the greatness is in God, it's in Christ, not in yourself. You know, even if God has given you success, it's because of Him, not because of you. So I want you to strip yourself off totally everything naked before the Lord and tell God that all the things that I have belongs to you. I belong to you. All my success is given by you. So I want you to be humble before the Lord this, uh, this afternoon because the Lord wants to minister to your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now put your right hands onto your heart. That Jesus is asking you, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me then all of this, all of these things, do you love me? So I'll give you some moment, just let the Holy Spirit minister to you.
Father, we want to acknowledge that you are the Lord over our life. We want to acknowledge that we are weak, but you are strong. Restore us right now, Lord God. With all our humbleness, with all our humility, O oh Lord, you come and minister to your church. It's not because of me, but it is because of you. I can do nothing without you, O oh Lord. Please come, Jesus. I'll let the worship team to lead us in worship.
Just sing it with our hearts and believe in every word that you sing. Just like our prayer, our worship to His Majesty. Can we just sing that song as a prayer from your hearts? Thank you, God, of your great love that you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us. That Jesus, you came to the world not to condemn the world, but that through you, Lord Jesus, we will be saved. And we thank you, God, for the lesson that we have learned and how you came, O oh God, not to condemn. But God, to say, Lord, to, to restore us. We know, Lord, we have made a lot of mistakes. We have done a lot of things. And sometimes, oh God, we even pride ourselves in self-glory and lay our own crowns. But today, Lord, we say to you, God, we want to put everything, oh God, under the feet of Jesus. All of our past, oh God, of regrets and past mistakes, all our past glory, O oh God, and past success. We want to lay it down, O oh God, before you, O oh God. Because, Lord, apart from you, Lord Jesus, we can do nothing. And God, I just want to thank you, God, for once again the reminder of your goodness, your kindness. And you say in your word, O oh God, the kindness of God will lead us to repentance. The Lord, you want us to have this sorrow, O oh God, of remorseful, to repent, O oh God, but not to be condemned. That you have done everything that is needed on the cross. We pray, O oh God, that you will help us, O oh God, that we will not be proud, that we will not be arrogant, but we will be teachable, O oh God, that we have a heart, O oh God, that is soft. The heart, of oh God, is always learning from you and able to receive, oh God, the revelation that you have for us. Holy Spirit, I pray you will teach us, you will lead us, you will guide us, you will transform us to be more and more like Jesus, to the glory of God, our Father. That in our words, in our deeds, everything that we do, we do it, oh God, humbly, oh Lord, as unto you, oh God. We acknowledge you all the time. We love you. And Lord, like Peter, Lord, we will be able to answer you, O oh God, with humility, knowing that it is just the grace of God 
when you ask us, oh God, do you love? Do you love me? Do you love me? That we will be able, oh God, in humility and knowing it is just the grace of God alone that says, yes, God, we love you, oh God, because you first love us. God, oh God, oh God, help us. Help us, oh God, to be more like Jesus. And Lord, to be more like you, to be transformed from glory to glory, from strength to strength. That Lord, you have called us, oh God, the church for one purpose, to know you and to make you known to this world. Let us, oh Lord, not divert from that, but let us love you, know you, oh God, so that, Lord, we will be able to show the world, oh God, your love, because we have love for one another, because we, oh God, bring that gospel, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I praise and thank you for this word of grace, this word, oh God, that you have given to us today. And we pray all this, O oh Lord Jesus. Accept, O oh God, our love today. We pray in Jesus' name. Can we just sing again, Majesty? And then we will be dismissed and have a good week ahead. Sing one more time, Majesty. Majesty. Yes, O oh God.